Canada has fallen 4-1 away to Japan in Mauro Biello's first match as Canadian interim manager since taking the reins from John Herdman. And this match could have already put Mauro Biello out of that permanent manager running, as this was an absolute horror show from top to bottom from manager to the players to the midfield to the formation this match was horrendous from canada whichever way you want to look at it you cannot sugarcoat this one at all yes we got that consolation goal it's something to take away from this but this was an absolutely horror show from canada and most of this can be blamed on Mauro Biello, in my opinion, but a lot of this can go down to the players as well. The formation in the 3-5-2 isn't it. And I'm going to be really pounding that back, guys. I've talked about this 3-5-2 for so long, and it's just not going to work for this Canadian side. You saw it in transition. You saw it defensively. You saw it with players opening up in the spaces. You saw the lack of players opening up. And it's just not going to work for Canada. Whether it's going forward or defensively, it just doesn't work. And it's a huge takeaway from this game against a huge opponent in world football. As well, looking at the three-man midfield, guys, it just doesn't work. Whether it's Oso, Piet, or the likes of Kone, that midfield looks so disorganized and not ta technically up to the standard that they had to be. Whether they are too slow, behind the pace, it just wasn't working from that midfield three. Before I dwell on the midfield three, I really need to talk about this formation from Canada. As Mauro Biello set this side up in a 3-5-2 of course, Alistair Johnson, Derek Cornelius, and Kamal Miller, with Davies and Larea as the wingbacks, and Piet holding that midfield with the likes of... Kone and Osorio on either side, with the likes of all we know, Larine and David up top. And this formation for me, I've been hounding it for so long, whether it was under Herdman or now under Biello, this 3-5-2 system just doesn't work for Canada. Whichever way you want to put it, it does not work. Defensively in transition, we are getting absolutely ruined, and against the bigger nations, as we saw today, it's just never going to work. Davies is always going to want to bomb so far forward when given that opportunity. And we saw it multiple times where Kamal Miller was dragged out wide to cover for Davies. As yes, Davies has that recovery speed, but he's not always going to be there when he's bombing so far up the pitch. And when you play him at wing back, he's going to have that freedom to go out far up the pitch. Yes, he'll have some defensive responsibility, but he is leaving so much pressure on Kamal Miller that it is just so much. And as we saw today, Kamal Miller on those one-on-ones out wide, he is not up to it, as he was absolutely torched multiple times by Japanese attackers. And it was extremely clear early on in that match that they were going to attack that space behind Davies. They knew Davies was going to play wing back. They knew he was going to take that freedom to go forward. And they absolutely went at Canada at that left flank or at that right flank of Japan. And they hammered us there every single time the first couple goals came from there the first goal very much started from there it was down that flank where Davies should have been and then it was lack of clearing the ball which led to multiple mistakes this 3-5-2 just doesn't work guys we saw it multiple times this game where in transition we saw two defenders whether it was Derek Cornelius and Kamal Miller on their own whether it's Piet sitting back there on his own whether it was the likes of on whether it was the third or the second goal i can't remember guys because there was so many mistakes but that third goal there was two defenders an alley and the likes of fonzie dropping back where there was the own goal this was the one and the center backs both three stepped up but the wing backs dropped back there has to be some communication and leadership back there as well if you get a four in the back you get a strong leader you get two center backs they move up, they move back, fluid with their two wing backs, and there's more communication. Because this three back, there's no communication going on, there's no organization, there's no leadership, and you could see it, especially on that second goal, where you saw the three center backs step up to play that offside trap, and you saw Ali and Fonzie step back, and then it left a huge gap down the middle for that ball to be played in. And then it was just a clear goal. Fonzie had to try and clear it. It came off Boyan. It's a very unfortunate own goal. But there's nothing they can do when there's no communication. There's no leadership. And when 
the wing backs are dropping back. How do they know the center backs are going to step up? There's got to be some communication there. And switching to a four in the back, you'll have two center backs, strong communication, moving up, fluid with their center backs, whether it's them shifting, them stepping up, moving from side to side. The four in the back is just a more fluid system, and you can play Cornelius with his left foot off the left side center back, and you can play the likes of maybe Stephen Vittoria still with that leadership on the right side. You can play Joel Waterman. You can play Lucas McNaughton. You can have so many more options there. And it becomes a very much more fluid, organized system. You don't have Fonzie bombing on. You don't have Richie bombing on, especially when those two are bombing on. You're then left with three at the back. And we saw so many times today where Kamal Miller was isolated and he was absolutely torched, whether it's for pace, one-on-one -on -one ability, and albeit he's a very good defender, he has his flaws and we saw it today. When he was given that space, when he was exposed out wide by Japanese attackers, it was very clear that he can't be defending in a three back to especially cover for Fonzie. He doesn't have the pace, he doesn't have the one-on-one -on -one ability, and it extremely showed today. A three in the back doesn't work, and it needs to be changed. I would love to see a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, and we saw it immediately. I'm going to talk about the three-man midfield in a sec, guys. Don't worry, I'll definitely touch on that, because there was a lot to talk about in that three-man midfield. But one thing I want to look at here as well. You saw very much of that in the game. Liam Millar, who I hound on about. He is a phenomenal footballer. His one-on-one -on -one ability is extremely exciting. When he takes a man on, he's not looking to one to it. He's not looking to beat your man. He's looking to take them straight on. He's looking at that wing back. He's looking at that center back, that central midfielder, and he's saying, I'm going to beat you. And he did that. He got subbed on. He got the ball. and He drove at that back line. And we arguably could have scored or should have scored from that. It was a brilliant create creativity play from Liam Millar to finally work something for Canada. And isn't it mind-blowing? You bring on a winger, you bring on an attacker who wants to pick up the ball in space, who wants to drive at the fullbacks and the, and the center backs and create something and attack these Japanese defenders. That is exactly what we needed for a solid 75 to 80 minutes. Liam Millar comes on. And look at that, we create a brilliant chance. That is another reason, in my opinion, why Canada needs a formation change. You bring on the likes of Liam Miller you on one wing or on the other, and you bring on Davies at one wing or at fullback. You'll have such overlapping as well, and you'll have Tejon Buchanan, Fonzie in each wing, who both love to take on their man and beat them for pace, dribbling ability, one-on-one, quick one twos they have the space they have the agility they have the speed that is why you play wingers who are willing to beat their man and take them all one on one Liam Millar showed it immediately when he came on that pitch and it was exciting to see and I had to point that out guys but moving on to the three man midfield this has to be talked about I tweeted it Sam Piet was for me the man of the match I'm not saying Sam Piet was phenomenal I'm not saying he was great I'm not saying he was even good by any means of the definition. He had a good start, he played decent, but that's an extremely low bar to what Kone and Oso were giving in that midfield. Look at that fourth goal. Kone, the, Ali clears the ball out wide when he should have went back to Boyan. Everyone was telling him to go back to Boyan, but he doesn't. He clears it down the field. We lose possession. Who's, close, who's the one who should be closing him down? Kone. Even though he's way out of position in the midfield, he should still be closing that Japanese uh, midfielder down. He doesn't. Then the ball comes up front. Sam Piet is in the area. And I'm not saying he wins it by any means, but he's in his position. Oso is nowhere to be found, and you're then bypassed your two central midfielders where you should be overloading the midfield. Oso and Kone did not allow us to overload that midfield. I'm not saying Piet did it by any means. I'm saying he was positionally solid. And to start that game, Piet was at least getting stuck in. He was winning challenges. He was playing the ball very simple, but very quick and effective. When Oso and Kone had the ball there, Kone tried some nice spins. Oso was trying to move the ball very intricately, which is not what those two can do. Kone can do that, but Oso definitely can't. And they were just trying to do too much in the midfield from Kone and Oso's perspective. What I liked from Piet, yes, he's playing the six, so he's playing a 
position that's more underrated and goes under the radar. And I saw it completely over Twitter. I tweeted that Kone was very, or Piet was very underrated and wasn't getting the plaudits he deserved. I'm not saying he was phenomenal, guys. I said that a second ago. He was decent. He had a good start. He was getting stuck in. He was playing the simple passes, the simple balls. He wasn't sloppy. He wasn't losing possession, unlike Kone, unlike Oso. But in a whole, the midfield was a horror show. I'm not saying it was a good performance by anyone. I'm just saying it was a horror show. And out of 11 poor performers, Piet was probably the best. And then Cornelius. It was an absolute horror show in that midfield. And it took way too long for him to make a full three midfield change. And even changes in general. It was very interesting that midfield three. And that midfield th- three needs to be changed as soon as possible, especially coming against Jamaica, who are a fluent, fast, attacking side who will be pressing us to high crap, and it's going to be very interesting to see how Canada does, because Piet, albeit he was simple, kept it very calm, got stuck in, against Jamaica, he'll be fine, but also was extremely slow and off the pace, Piet, after about 25-30 minutes, he was extremely slow off the pace, And I'll hold my hands up, guys. I'm no MLS fan. I've never been a huge Piet fan. But this game, he wasn't terrible. I'm not saying he was good. He wasn't terrible. But Piet and Ozo were still slow and massively off the pace. This is why we need to see Chouanier. We need to see Nathan Saliba. We need to see Ali Ahmed. We need to see Harry Payton. We need to see Ismail Kone. And we need to see Steph Nostakio. That's our thick six-man midfield. Kone, Estacchio, with Harry Payton or Chouanier, and then you have Nathan Saliba and Ali Ahmed. That has to be the midfield six. When you're playing a 6-3 man midfield, those have to be your six midfield options. Young, expressive, exciting, smart on the ball, not stupid, they're not sloppy. They're very smart players who are going to be expressive as well. They're going to take their chance up the field. They're going to have a shot. Also should have hit the ball. He doesn't. And it's something we look back on. And it's very, very interesting. But before I wrap up here, guys, I quickly want to talk about the substitutions. The Cornelius one really puzzled me coming off of Victoria. For me, Cornelius was the only one who didn't really make a step wrong. He didn't really make a massive error. Yes, it's an extremely low bar from our center backs. But for me, I would have kept on Cornelius. If he's staying at that same formation, put Cornelius out left at center back, pull Kamal Miller, and bring Steve Vittori in the middle. I thought bringing the three-man midfield was great to finally bring them all off. And giving Charles and Liam Millar a run out was very exciting, but it should have been a lot earlier. There are so many takeaways from this game, guys. Hopefully, Mauro Biello doesn't get that permanent job, albeit an extremely tough matchup. But this was a horror show, whether it was the lineup and everything to go with it. So my takeaways from this, guys, was, of course, Mauro Biello probably doesn't get that permanent job unless he can really change things and has a huge match against Jamaica. The formation needs to be changed as soon as possible to a 4-3-3. The three-man midfield works, but it has to be the right three. Oso and Piet need to be out of the squad. And the likes of Ali Ahmed and Nathan Saliba have to be knocking on that door and getting the likes of Piet and Oso out of this team. Let me know your guys' comments and match reaction between Canada 4-1 loss to Japan and how you guys think Mauro Biello fared. And what are you guys' thoughts on that three-man midfield? Because I'd love to hear it because I was getting bashed on Twitter for my thoughts. Drop a comment, hit that sub, and drop a like, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.